Say amen. amen. If you're not glad you're here, just say oh me. <laughs> hope nobody says oh me. I hope you come today to uh, get something from the word of the God that will help you and strengthen you and encourage you along the way. I don't know about you folks, but I need church. Yes. Amen. I, I need the Lord. The Lord doesn't necessarily need us, but we sure do need him. And I'm glad he said he'd be whatever, uh, he, whatever we needed. He said he'd be that to us. So it's good to see you this morning. Good to be in the Lord's house. And we got some folk that are uh, on vacation and out and gone. Got some that are sick this morning. Uh, Brother Ron's brother Don's sick. So let's pray for him. And uh, uh, Donna asked that we pray for her daughter, Brandy. She's going to be having some surgery Wednesday to keep her in your prayers. And pray for Brother Ronnie Owens. He has a, had an accident and he's messed his foot up so keep brother ronnie owens in your prayer continue to pray for brother randy uh, robinette he may get to go home tomorrow tuesday uh, but they're also talking about maybe doing another procedure on it spartanburg regional so just pray that uh, yet lord just continue to bless him and be with wanda and help her and may the lord's will be done bless each one of them it's good to see in the lord's house we got a lot of folk that are that we can mention the lord knows the need about all those requests especially those ladies that have cancer of course we always want to remember and pray for our shut-ins Let's stand, if you would, please, and we'll go to the Lord in word of prayer. Ask the Lord's blessing to be upon these requests and upon the service today. And just pray the Lord to be pleased and exalted and lifted up and honored in everything that's said and done. Brother Danny Henry, if you'd pray for us, please. Amen. Remain standing, please. Turn your hymn books, page number 96. Page number 96. We'll sing the first and the last verse. He abides. I'm rejoicing night and day as I walk the narrow way. seated. Choir remains standing, please. I'm glad he abides with me. He goes wherever we go. I'm glad that his presence is a miracle in our lives. Sometimes we may not understand it and we may not agree, but I'm glad he makes a walking miracle in each and every one of us.
I'm glad he's always there for us. He always takes care of us. And that's what I'm going to try to sing a song this morning. Talks about that. Pray for me that I can get through it. I don't know, but we're going to try it anyway. Impending storms just ahead I can see the darkened clouds There's no way around it There is no way out There was danger all around me Surely I presence made the way it's too late now he walked out on the waters facing the wind how it roared and it thundered he raised his hand in the But my heart was hearing clearly what he spoke to me. Be not afraid, it is I. And I won't leave you all alone with my eyes fixed on the Savior. I can no longer see the storm. He walked out on the waters, facing the wind. How it roared and it thundered, till he raised his hand. Then the
And when the waves of life They're so high you can melt them Then he'll step between you and the I'm glad we have a Savior that will step in between us and the storm we might be facing. Uh, it was all made possible because of that one day on Calvary where he, said it, he shed his <clears throat> precious blood for you and for me. Without Calvary, none of it would be possible. We'd have no hope in this life. But I'm glad at Calvary we found our hope. that day at Calvary when the Lord and Savior gave his life for you and for me. Do you know there may be some of us that haven't ever experienced that. You never had the blood of Jesus applied to your life. But that's the only way you're going to get there today. It's through his blood. And if you'll stand, please <clears throat> turn your hymn books, page 124. We're going to sing a song, Are You Washed in the Blood? We'll sing the first, second, and the last verse. Choir can be excused on the first verse. Hey. 
be seated. This time we're going to have, uh, Brother Brian's going to come and sing for us. Pray for him while he's coming. And we will have choir practice today. Choir practice today at five o'clock. Please, be, please try to be here. Please be here today at five o'clock. Ever since I saw Randy last week, this song has been on my heart. And I, I can't begin to imagine what goes through his mind every day because I'm, I'm pretty healthy comparatively but I do know that with his testimony being what it is he's got his hope in the Lord my servant Job, he's one who's faithful in all that he knows. Job lost his family, his land, and all his wealth when he wouldn't curse God. Job lost his health. Job's cries could be heard from the ashes where he lay. But through his pain and sorrow, Job still had to say, My hope is in the Lord. I will trust in him and him alone.
doctor broke the news It might be a week, could be a month or maybe two But your cancer has spread and death will find its way There's nothing we can do, there's nothing I can but the young man raised his trembling hands As his eyes filled with tears And you could hear him softly say Through the pain, the fear My hope is in the Lord I'm gonna trust in Him and Him alone should be in the Lord. Can't hope in our government, that's for sure. <laughs> so you can't hope in your jobs. Sad to say, you can't even hope in your family or your friends anymore. But I'm telling you this morning, we can always have our hope in the Lord Jesus. Amen. And I'm not hoping that I'm saved. I'm talking about that hope where I have that expectation that one day I'll be with the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 I've talked to a lot of people, and I've witnessed some people, and I say, are you a Christian? Do you know the Lord is your Savior? And they'll say, well, I hope so. I'm not talking about that kind of hope so. I'm glad I've got a no-so salvation. Amen. Amen. Took care of that at Calvary one day. The choir sang about that a moment ago. And, uh, on the day that I got saved, I've never questioned about where I was going when I leave this life. Haven't always been everything I should be and should have been. But God's always been more than enough. And to that I give him praise and glory and honor. So wonderful to be here this morning. Uh, the flowers that are on the communion table here this morning are placed here by Vesta Thornton and my wife Linda. Vesta's placing them to help with them in honoring the memory of her mother, Sister Nettie Epley, that went home to be with the Lord. She was 95, 97 years old when she went home to be with the Lord. And Linda's helping with the flowers this morning and placing them here in the honor of Nanny's birthday. That'll be Tuesday. She'll be, anybody know how old she'll be? 104. <laughs> Close. <laughs> she'll be 85. I figure she done told everybody. She told me about 104 times. Amen. But she'll be, birthday will be Tuesday. So we appreciate the beautiful flowers and thank you so much. For that, before we have the offering, I, a couple of things I'd like to mention. Uh, I appreciate the men that do the work around the church and, and the labor and the effort that they do. It's a real blessing, and they do that from a labor of love. And uh, it's a real blessing to see men that do that. But I'd like to mention uh, Brother Bill Strong, Brother Danny Henry. They cut the grass here at the church. And uh, I appreciate them doing that, doing it faithfully. And and uh, don't have to ask them to do it. Don't have to tell them to do it. They just do it because they love the Lord and because they see that it needs to be done. I used to cut the grass at the other church I attended. And somebody said, one day told me, he said, why didn't, why didn't you call me and tell me that you was going to cut the grass? I said, nobody called me and told me that uh, I, was, I just saw it needed to be cut. And I figured we'd just cut it, amen. So that's what you have to do. And I appreciate Brother Roy Finley. Brother Roy cuts the, cuts the grass 
up at our signs up on 221 and does a good job with that. Has to load a lawnmower, pull a trailer, go to both ends of 221, cuts it, does a good job. Brother, well, we thank you so much. Appreciate that so much, you doing that. And Brother Jimmy Smith did that before he got sick and was unable to do it. And Brother Jimmy done a great job and was faithful in doing it. And uh, Brother Jimmy and, and Sister Dizer may be listening this morning, by the way, of the Internet. And if they are, we'd just like to say thank you to Brother Jimmy Amen. that done it for many, many uh, times. And then also, Brother Danny has been going over and cutting Brother Randy um, Robinette's grass at his house. And uh, Brother Randy said, just be sure to tell Brother Danny I said thank you. So I appreciate these people that will do this out of a love and a desire to do something, to be a blessing to the church and be a blessing to the church family. It's just a real blessing. Thank you so much, man, and God bless you for that. Uh, don't forget to pray for our tent meeting. It'll be coming up in just a few weeks now. It was months. Now it's just a few weeks. That'll be uh, September the 10th. I believe it is through the 15th, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that'll be a Sunday night through a Friday night. Now, on Sunday night, We'll start our services for the tent meeting at 7 o'clock instead of 6 o'clock like we normally do. Uh, but just for the tent meeting only will we do that. And that's to keep so I won't get confused that all the services during the tent meeting, Sunday night through Friday night, will be at 7 p.m. So keep that in mind. Amen. And don't forget to, uh, those of you that can help us with drinks, we're getting ready to go to, go to the fair once again. And, and uh, we need all the help we can get with Coca-Colas, Diet Coke, and Sprite. And Dasani Water, if you could help us with that. We gave away about 4,000 drinks over there last year. That doesn't count 85 gallons of tea and, uh, the, and all that we give out. So we need, we need some help with that if you can help us with it and be a real blessing. And tonight, uh, after the service tonight, all the young people that want to go, we're going to take, take you to the new meeting place in Roebuck, South Carolina. The snow cone shack, shack up here. The Pelican Snow Cone Place. I went by there yesterday, and I don't believe people in Roebuck has ever had a snow cone. That place was packed. Come back by it later, and it was still packed. Came back by last night about 8.30, and it still had a lot of people there. So they may not have any left, but tonight, those that want to go, the young people that want to go, we're going to take you up there and buy you a snow cone. And uh, that'll be immediately after the service tonight. Now, the rest of you can go, too. You just have to buy your own. Amen. So uh, we're looking forward to that, and I appreciate our young people, and I want to do anything to encourage them to be faithful to the Lord's house and to be in their place. And listen, we're not trying to buy them in, because if we buy them in with a snow cone, somebody will take them out with a hot dog. But we just want them to fall in love with Jesus and get involved in the Lord's work and do some great things for the Lord. And for that's what this, this is our next church, next generation. If the Lord does not come back, these children will be our next church. And so we need to train them right, teach them right. And, call, and, and let them see us live right the way that we should. So uh, tonight, after the service, we'll do that. And I'll hope all our young people plan to go, okay? Let's have the ushers to come forward and receive our offering this evening. And uh, you give as given unto the Lord. And I know the Lord will bless you for that. May his will be done in our lives and in our hearts. Amen. Brother Jack Stevens, if you would, please, would you pray and ask the Lord's blessing upon the offering. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes, help us, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Brother Jack.
Praise the Lord. I'm glad today I serve a Savior that lives. Amen. As the songwriter says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. So wonderful to have our visitors with us this morning. And if you're visiting with us for the first time, we thank you so much for coming and being a part of our services this morning. I certainly hope and pray that you'll get something that will help you and bless you, something to make you want to come back at least one more time. Amen. And uh, we just try to do what the Lord would have us to do, try to, try to keep... Te try to preach the old-fashioned way, sing the old-fashioned hymns, do it the old-fashioned way. Amen. I've always heard if it's not broke, don't try to fix it, amen. amen. So that's what we try to do around here. And listen, I'm not saying we're a perfect church, but he said we do serve a perfect God. Amen. We have a perfect Savior. And uh, thank God one day we will be perfect when the Lord presents us in heaven. Amen. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. I'm glad I'm forgiven today. Amen. You know... I've been saved for a number of years, but can I say there's been some other times since I've been saved that I've had to ask for forgiveness? Yeah. Brother Roger, I've failed the Lord many times. I've let him down. I've got out of fellowship with him, and, and, and all of us have. And we got all been out of shape and wasn't where we should have been with the Lord. But I'm glad we can ask forgiveness. Yeah. I don't care what you've done. We have a God that forgives. Amen. He cleanses us from all of our sins and forgives us when we fail him, even after we're saved. I heard one say last night, uh, a man say last night, and I've, I've just never really thought about it this way. We know the Lord Jesus died for sinners, but he died for sinners that he knew that would never be saved. You see, the Lord knows who will and who won't. That's because he's God. He's sovereign. He knows everything. He knows everything about you, and he won't tell nobody. You don't have a friend like that. <laughs> you don't have family members like that. Some people will tell everything. Brother Dennis says, I'm like an old refrigerator. I can't hold nothing. <laughs> but that's true about some. But the Lord knows all about us and won't tell us so. There may be some here this morning that when you leave today, I want you to leave better Amen. than the way you came in. And it's not going to be anything that I say or anything that I do, but it's going to be what the Holy Spirit of God does in the message and through you that makes that difference. And what a difference he'll make in your life if you allow him. I want to sing for you this morning a song that I've sung many times. That this is one that we sing in the Easter drama a lot. A song simply entitled, Please Forgive Me. And if you need forgiveness this morning, I'll rest assured he'll forgive you if you'll come. Amen. Don't allow the devil to defeat you. Just wave your hand to me. Yeah. You need to come to the altar. The altar is open every time and all the time. Well, my sleep is gone. My heart is full of sorrow. I can't believe how much I've let you down. I dread the pain that waits for me tomorrow When the sun reveals my broken dreams scattered on the ground Please forgive me I need your grace to make it through And all I have is you I'm at your mercy Lord, I'll serve you until my dying day. Help others find a way. I'm at your mercy. Please forgive me. Well, I can't believe the God of earth and glory. Would take the time to love someone like me. But I read in the Bible that old story. How he bled for my forgiveness as he died upon the tree. Please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through 
And all I have is you I'm at your mercy And Lord I'll serve you Until my dying day Help others find a way I'm at your mercy Thank God for his forgiven mercy His long suffering goodness toward each and every one of us. Please forgive me. I need your grace to make it through. And all I have is you. I'm at your mercy. Lord, please forgive me. Until my dying day. Help others find a way, I'm at your mercy, please forgive me. And all I have is you, please forgive me. Thank God for a forgiving God. None of us this morning has, we don't have anything to be ashamed of. We just need to be, ask the Lord to forgive us and cleanse us. If you have your Bibles, turn if you would please over to the book of Luke chapter number 23. And while you're turning, let me just mention this morning at the conclusion of the service, we have some school supplies for all the kids that are here this morning. We have them up from the... K-4 all the way up to college. Uh, some school supplies that will help you get started. I know you're excited about going back to school, aren't you, kids? Well, I guess not. But anyway, you pray for our children as they head back to school next week. and Well, it's not this coming week, but the week after this week. But you pray for them. When is it? Thur this Thursday? Okay, well, a little sooner than I thought. So... You pray for them. And, of course, I think they'll be out Monday because of the eclipse. Next Sunday, I'm going to preach on, where were you when the lights went out? Maybe. But I think of a better title. It's what the Lord's laid on my heart next Sunday for me to preach unless he changes my mind. When the sun, the S-O-N, becomes hidden. When the sun becomes hidden. So you pray for us. They having cookouts, fireworks, shows. People throwing parties at work and jobs. <laughs> Cause the eclipse. They say this is a once in a lifetime event. It can't be because they said, I don't remember it, but they said that we had one in 1976. And it may not have been in this part of the country. It might have just been in, in the USA. I don't know. It might, might have not been in this part of the country. But I, I was around 1976, and I don't remember an eclipse. And they said the next one would be in the year 2027. Now, I know some of us won't see that one, uh, only but by the grace of God. But I'll just be honest with you, folks. I believe Jesus will be back long before then. In fact, he might come back before this one. And this coming on Monday uh, of that week. So you be much in prayer. Uh, Monday of next week, a week from this Monday. Be much in prayer, and may the Lord's will be done. In the book of Luke chapter 23, I'm going to read verses 32 down through verse number 38. And this morning, I'm going to preach on this thought. A place called Calvary. A place called Calvary. Read with me if you would, please. Verse number 32, the Bible says, And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they came to the place which is called Calvary, there they were cruci they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment and cast lots. And the people stood beholding the rulers, and the rulers also with them derided, derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar. 
and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, and the Latin and Hebrew, This is the king of the Jews. And then verse number 29, let's read it if you would please. The Bible says, And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. Now as we read this account here in the book of Luke, each one of the Gospels, the four Gospels, beginning the New Testament of the King James Bible, each Gospel records the account of the crucifixion. In the book of Matthew, we see the Lord Jesus Christ as the King, the King of the Jews, the baby born in a manger that would be King. Then in the book of Luke here, in the, uh, our book, in the book of Mark, we see him as servant. Here in the book of Luke, we see him as the Son of Man. And in the book of John, we see the Lord Jesus Christ as being the Son of God. So in the, all four Gospels and the New Testament as it began, each one covers the account of the crucifixion. And I thank God for the crucifixion. I know that we celebrate Easter, but if it had not been a crucifixion, we would not have an Easter and we would not have a resurrected Savior. A while ago, they were playing that a moment ago, that song, Because He Lives. They didn't know what I was going to preach on this morning. Brother Jamie didn't know what I was going to preach on this morning when he sang that song at Calvary. And I think about all the songs that we have in our hymn books and all the songs that we sing concerning Calvary and how important uh, that Calvary is to us. And listen, I like, I like songs about Calvary. I like the old rugged cross and I like the song Calvary Covers It All and, uh, and the old rugged cross made a difference. All those songs are so wonderful and so great that deals with the cross and what happened and what took place on the cross. But the, what took place on the cross was a love that was shown to mankind that did not deserve to be loved. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, but God commended his love toward us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You see, we didn't have to straighten up. We didn't have to do better. We didn't have to try to quit doing this and quit. We didn't have to quit. Hey, if you was drinking, you didn't have to quit drinking to get saved. But you get drinking after you get saved. Amen. You don't have to quit doing drugs before you got saved. You, got, you quit doing drugs after you got saved. There's so many times we think people come in the church doors and come in and sit down in our church service. We think they're supposed to come in pearly white and clean before they ever get saved. That's not the way it happens, folks. Hey, we need to let God, we need to catch them and let God clean them up. But uh, hey, it's all right now. Y'all loosen up a little bit this morning. I'm going to preach till y'all get happy. Amen. Man, some of you smiling now from ear to ear. But listen, this is what it's all about, is us realizing what Calvary has done for each and every one of us. Had it not been for Calvary, we would not be assembling ourselves today in this, in this building, worshiping the Savior of the world. But thank God for Calvary, thank God for what it means, and thank God that it's recorded in the Scriptures, each one of these Gospels, in order that we might know the full extent of just actually what took place on Calvary. I don't think we really know, I don't think we really grasped hold of just what the Lord Jesus Christ went through for you and for me in order that we could be saved and have a place called heaven. Thank God for Calvary and what Calvary means to us. I mentioned to you a moment ago here in Luke chapter 23, verse number 33, that we're going to look at this little title this morning where it says, and when they were come to a place which is called Calvary. Thank God for Calvary. Oh my, what a blessing it is as we look and we see what took place. I want to mention a few things concerning Calvary and what the place of Calvary really was. As we look at the first point this morning, I would, make you take, I would ask you to take notice that the Calvary was a place of shame. It was a place of shame, oh my, as we think about what he did. And in the, in the Bible says, in, uh, we, we realize what he went through on, on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says that they mocked him. Mocking is, a, is, is a something that we do to, and it doesn't say the word mockery there, but it does. Here, let me get that verse, verse number 35, where the Bible says, uh, and they derided him. Now, that word we don't use anymore. I, I, I don't never heard anybody use that word anymore, but the word derided there just simply means it is a contemptuous or a mocking smile or remarks or a tone. It's just being a smart aleck. Now, we've heard of that before. I've heard, I've heard a few smart aleks, but I've heard people today that have, uh, have really been rude and, and, and how that people have mocked people. 
I've seen people mock people on the way they walk. I've seen people mock people how the way they talk. I've seen people mock people by the way that they... I'm sorry about that. forgot about that, dog. I've just seen them mock them in their life. And to me, that's real de de degrading. It's really sad, and it's, it's, a, it's a shame that, that, that we see people that will do that. But I'm talking about sometimes that adults themselves, and not just children. Not, and, and kids, they do it sometimes, but they do it uh, sometimes. They don't really understand what they're doing. But sometimes I've seen some people that mock people. You better be careful what you mock. You better be careful what you make fun of. You know, when somebody mocks us, first thing we want to do, we want to punch them in the nose, don't we? We want to give them a black eye. But you see, the Lord Jesus, as he was mocked, Brother Brian, on the cross of Calvary, he's never said one thing. He never opened his mouth one time. You know, he was allowing his death on the cross to speak the message of love. Now, you can't speak love out of one side and hate out of the other side. Just doesn't work that way. It's not, that's not the way. And listen, we as the people of God, and we that are saved by the grace of God, and we that have been redeemed by the one that they mocked on the cross of Calvary, I know sometimes it's hard, I know sometimes it's difficult, but sometimes we just have to show a sweet spirit no matter what kind of situation or what kind of circumstance we may be in. Somebody might mock you, somebody might talk about you, Somebody might do something against you. And the first thing that this old flesh wants to do, Brother Roy, it wants to retaliate. Yeah. Hey, we want to lash out. We want to, hey, listen, how many times have we said something that we wished we had never said? How many times have we did some things that we wished that we had never done? How many times have we done that and wished we could call it back? But we can't. But people today, they're mocked. And listen, we lash out. We get that. But the Lord Jesus Christ was mocked. And that was a shameful mock that they mocked him with. Why? Because he was doing the will of the Heavenly Father and he was mocked for doing that. Can I say this morning that we sometimes, even as Christians and believers that stand on the Bibles and the, the principles of the Bible and we stand for what's right, sometimes we get talked about. Sometimes we get run down. Sometimes we get put down. Sometimes we get mocked and talked about how that we're a bunch of, uh, bunch of um, uh, holy rollers or whatever. I was one last weekend because we was up in Pigeon Forge and I failed up at Pigeon Forge. And I rolled about four or five times when I got up. First one of them said, Preacher, you must be a holy roller. <laughs> I felt like socket. No, I didn't feel like socket. <laughs> but listen, we get accused and we get called names. We, they, they, can't, they say we're Bible thumpers. You can call me what you want to, but I'm saved by the grace of God. Amen. And I'm saved this morning because one that hung upon that cross was mocked for you and he was mocked for me. You see, all the shame that he suffered on that cross, he did it because of you. And I don't think sometimes we need to be silent. We need to let people know where we stand. Amen. So we see how that he was mocked and how that he was ridiculed. Not only was he mocked, but the Bible also tells us that he was spit upon. Now that's about, that's, that's about as degrading as you can get. I don't know very many people here in this building this morning, no matter your age or, or, or whatever, your health or whatever. I don't know very many people here that's going to stand and let somebody just spit in their face. Now, that'll get your blood boiling. That'll make you a little mad, brother buddy. But you see our darling Savior. Talking of the Lord Jesus Christ. He was spit upon. And that's a shame. And as they sped upon him, he opened not his mouth. He didn't even rebuke him for it. You know why? Because when he was on the cross, we were on his mind. The songwriter says he did it all for me. <laughs> Thank God for Calvary. Thank God, even though he went through the shame of them mocking him and talking about him and, 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 and uh, uh, spitting upon him. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 50 and verse number 6, it says, I gave my back to the smiters and my cheek to them that, uh, that plucked out the hair. I hid not my face from shame and spitting. Now, if somebody goes spit on me, I'm going to at least try to dodge it. But the Bible says that he turned not his face 
In other words, he endured all the hell on the cross so that you and I would not have to. He endured all the shame on the cross so that we would not have to. And then I think one of the most other degrading things you can do do to a person is to slap them. And the Bible says that here in that verse that I just read to you, the Bible says, and my cheeks to them that plucked off my hair. And they also struck him in the face with their hands. How degrading. What a shame that, our, that he went through those things for you and for me. So you see, the cross was a place of shame. As we take a look concerning the cross, and there's many verses that I could read to you there, but we don't have time to turn and get all those this morning. But do we think about it and we see that? But not only that, but the Bible says concerning the shame of the cross, not only, not only did, they, did they spit upon him, not only did they slap him in the face, not only did they mock him, but number three, they took his garment. They parted his garments. The Bible tells us in the book of Luke chapter 23, verse number 34, then said Jesus, Father, forgive them for they know not what to do. And they parted his garment and cast lots. Now I know when you see a picture of the cross or the crucifixion, and they have the picture of Christ hanging on the cross. I know that there is some clothing draped about his body. But there was no clothing on his body. I don't wear, I don't wear necklaces anyway. But some do. And I've seen some people wear a cross, a necklace with a cross, and they have Jesus hanging on the cross. That's Catholic. I throw them in Catholicism. Our Savior is no longer on the cross. He died on the cross. He came down off the cross. They buried him and put him in the tomb. But he did not even stay in the tomb. He's resurrected. We serve a living Savior today. He is risen from the grave. But before he was taken off that cross, and while he died on that cross, he was put to an open shame with no clothing on him whatsoever. I'm talking about the Holy Son of God. I'm talking about God incarnated in the flesh. Jesus was hung on that cross without any clothing upon him. Out there in the open shame before everybody. And he did it for you. He did it for me. He did it for the people in Israel. He did it for the people in Iran. He done it for the people in Iran. You say, preacher, you really believe that? The Bible says Jesus died for the whole world. Hey, he can save anybody, anytime, anywhere if they'll ask him. But he was put to an open shame. We see not only that, but we see that Calvary is a place not only of, sh- of suffering, or not only shame, but it's a place of suffering. We don't have time this morning to go through everything, but let's turn over to the book of Isaiah. And I think in the book of Isaiah chapter 53, you know where I'm going. This is a portion of scripture that tells us exactly what the Lord Jesus Christ went through. And I know we have our Easter drama and here at the church. And I know that we depict some way and how that the Lord Jesus Christ suffered and what he went through. But let me just say that nothing is even comparable to that. I know some of you saw probably the passion play that was out a few years back and everybody went and, and flocked to that and went to see that. And I, I never seen it myself, but they said it was just a, Terrible. Let me just say, even what Hollywood produces did not compare to what our Savior went through. The suffering and the shame that he went through. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah 53, he says, Who hath believed our report? And and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, And we shall see him. There is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. Now I want you to listen here in verse number 5. In these verses we're going to read down below that. But he was wounded. For our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. 
and have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in, rich in his death. Because he hath done no violence, neither was any deceit found in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. The Lord Jesus Christ suffered all the things that are mentioned here in the Isaiah chapter number 53. Oh my, what a suffering time that it must have been. Now, just thinking about just the physical suffering that he had. Not even, coming, not even thinking and coming to mind the mental suffering that he must have went through, Brother Robert. As we think about it and as we read it and as we go through this. Knowing, and knowing, listen, knowing that he was doing it. Not because of himself. But because of people that deserve to be done that way. The Holy Lamb of God opened not his mouth. Took all the punishment, all the suffering, all the shame for you and for me. We see that. The agony of his suffering not only resulted from his physical pain, but the Bible tells us also that there was an absence of the Father was also caused him suffering. Matthew 27, 46 says, And at the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh my, how, 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 much, how it must have broke his heart. When his father himself turned his back on him. You say, why? Why would God do that? Why did God turn his back on his darling son? Because he turned his back on sin. He had our sins. The Bible says he laid upon him the iniquity of us all. He turned his back because the sin of this world was laid upon the shoulders of a holy Savior in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And God cannot, will not look on sin. He turned his back. You know, it's a terrible thing to be rejected. It's a terrible thing to be mistreated. Sometimes we face things in life where we are rejected. We face things in our life when people mistreat us. We face times in our life when people do us wrong and, and talk about us as we said a moment ago and sometimes run us down. But let me just say, we don't know the agony of suffering that he suffered because that his father turned his back on his son. You know, you and I that are parents and grandparents, one of the hardest things that we could ever do would be turn our back on our children and our grandchildren. I was talking to someone this morning, and I said, you know, it doesn't matter how you were done as a child or a person. Your kinfolk are still your kinfolk. They're still family. Mama might have not done right by you. Daddy may have not done right by you, but they're still your mama and they're still your daddy. But you think about how that, and listen, all of us haven't been model children either, by the way. It's all right to say amen right there. Right there, right there, whatever, whatever how you want to say it. It's all right to say, because we know we haven't been. But my mama and my daddy never turned their back on me. My grandparents, I wasn't around them enough, you know, for them to get real close enough. But they never turned their back on me either. And your parents, most of your parents never turned your back on you. But we see that God... The precious son of God. The perfect. The perfect son of God. Now listen. No matter how much we want to think so. I guarantee you none of our children were perfect. <laughs> well maybe Tyler. But none of our children were perfect. But we're talking about the precious perfect son of God. That was perfect. But because of your sin. 
and because of my sin. God could not look upon him, and he turned his back on him. And he did that for you. He did that for me. Brother Buddy, he did it for all the Mormons. Amen. Thank God you got saved Amen. out of the Mormon church. Jesus did that for you. That's right. Aren't you glad of that? Amen. You see, religion will take you to hell. I was talking to someone this morning about working with some people that are Jehovah Witnesses and how they're constantly on them. And, you know, listen, those people just need a good dose of Jesus. I mean, they just need to get saved. I mean, you know, you say, well, they they are saved. No, they're not. They're cults. They don't believe in the God we believe in. They don't believe in the Jesus we believe in. They'll give you enough truth just to get you hooked and get you sunk in. And the best thing you do is just do what the Bible says. Don't bid them people God speak. Oh, you can tell them about Jesus, but I'm telling you, they're so versed in what they've been trained up and brought up in. They'll tie you up in a knot. You say, well, I can believe in the King James Bible. You better more than believe it. You better know it before you get into combat with those folks. Just like when we went to the fair a couple of years ago and as we were setting up our booth and we went over across on the other side. And most of you know this story. We went across on the other side and there was a booth set up and it had Atheists of Spartanburg. The first year that we went to the fair. And I said, Lord, I, I don't know why. I don't know why you laid on our heart for us to go to the fair and set up a booth at the fair. I, I just don't know why you want us to do that. So while some of the men were unloading some of the stuff that we was going to have at the fair, I just started walking around and seeing the names, the tags that was going to be in each booth. And right across in front of us, I mean directly across in front of us, was that booth, Spartanburg Atheist. I said, I know why the Lord wanted us here at the fair. They were right beside the Spartanburg City, the police department's booth. You know what I told our people? Don't you be rude to them people. Don't go over and say, well, you're going to die and go to hell, you know. And listen, hey, they are, but there's a better tactful way of doing it. You can say, listen, Jesus loves you. If you don't get right with him, you're going to hell. You're not going to be, you're not going to heaven. And as far as I know, none of our people were rude to those people. And we offered them some, the same thing that we offered everybody else. We offered them a coat. We offered them popcorn. We, we probably even offered them apple pie. But we offered them, most of all, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't go up there to give away popcorn. If we're going to give away popcorn, we can get popcorn out up here on 3000 Stone Station Road. And I guarantee you somebody would stop. We don't go up there to give out 4,000 soft drinks. We go out there to give out 4,000 soft drinks along with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And 70-something people last year give their heart and life to Christ. And this year, it's going to be a double whammy. Because we're going to have two missionary families that's going to be with us this year to help us in the soul winning booth. Woo! The devil don't lie. You see, Christ suffered in order that we would have the burden to win other people to Jesus and be a witness to them. i got to hurry. We see the suffering of the father turning his back on his son. And then there's the suffering of others that were absent. Psalm 69 and verse number 20 says, Reproach hath broken my heart, and I am full of heaviness. And I look for some to take pity but there was none. And for comforters, but I found none. You see, it's almost like this. Jesus against the whole world. You know, we're going through a hard time and difficult times and sadness and disappointment. Boy, it sure is wonderful to have somebody to come by with a comforting word. Or an encouraging thought. Just to come by and say hello. Just come by in some way to comfort us. As the Lord Jesus Christ died upon the cross of Calvary. A place called Calvary. As he died there. No one came to be a comfort to him. 
He did that for you and me. As we think about what he went through. We think about the shame. We think about the suffering. And then it also was a place of sorrows. Peter was sorrowful because of his denial. Luke twenty two sixteen says, O Peter went out and wept bitterly. O Peter said, Lord, you can count on me. This other crowd may, may, may leave you. They may, they may forsake you. They may run off and leave you. But I'm telling you, Lord, you can count on me. And the Lord said, Peter, before the cock crows, you'll deny me thrice. You'll deny me three times. You know what happened? Just what Jesus told him would happen. You say, well, Peter always was putting his foot in his mouth. Well, sounds like some of us, doesn't it? How many times have we said, Lord, here I am. Use me. Here I am, Lord. It's not much, but take what I got and, and use it for your glory. And before we know it, we done took back everything we said we was going to do for God. He was sorrowful because those that had forsaken him and left him and run off. The Bible tells us at the great company, the and the women that were, there, that were there, they were sorrowful. In Luke 23, 27, it says, And they, they followed him, a great company of people and of women, who also bewailed and lamented him. Oh, yeah, there were some broken hearts. There was some sadness there. And, of course, Jesus' his mother was there, and we, we know that she was sorrowful. And there was sorry, sorrowfulness around the cross. And the reason I mention that this morning is today as we come in the presence of a holy God. And we hear good songs about the cross. We hear messages about the cross. And we hear what Christ has done for each and every one of us. We, don't, we still don't feel sorry for our sins. You know, in order to get saved, you've got to first of all get lost. In the society that we live in now, people think, hey, I'm good enough. I'm a good old Joe. I don't need to, hey, I, hey I'm all right. And people today don't realize that they're lost and that they're on their way to hell without hope. But if we just have our hearts broke about where we at and where we stand before holy God. You see, you're not going to stand before the preacher. You're not going to stand before the Sunday school teacher. You're not going to stand before your family or your friends. You're going to stand before a holy God. Oh my, how our hearts need to be broken. How that we need to be sorrowful when we hear of what the darling son of God went through in order that we could be saved. This morning, I don't know who may be here that's saved and not saved. I don't know. I know as I look around over the congregation, I know some of you. I've known some of you for a long time. I've heard your testimonies, what the Lord's done for you. I believe that you're saved and, and on your way to heaven. But there's, I don't know everybody that way. The only person that knows for sure is you and the Lord. And if there's one, just one inkling of a doubt in your mind, if you should die right now, if you're going to heaven or hell, today would be the day to make sure of that. There's nothing in this world that's worth dying going to hell over. Some people say, well, preacher, I've been coming to church for a long time, and I'm afraid what people might think if I come down the altar. It doesn't matter what people think. The main thing today is knowing that we're ready and prepared to go to heaven when he takes us out through the valley of the shadow of death or if we go out through the rapture, that we're ready to go to heaven. That's all that matters. You say, well, preacher, I've been a church member for a long time. Church membership won't do it. Well, preacher, I've been singing in the choir for that. Don't matter. Singing in the choir won't do it. I'm telling you, one visit to Calvary would make, make more difference in your life than singing 20 years in the church choir. You can be baptized and ducked a hundred times. And it won't, hey, it won't do nothing for your salvation. Now, that's what you're supposed to do once you get saved. But a lot of people are, are, are trusting their baptism. Some people are church in their church, they're trusting their church membership. Some people are coming. And, and listen, I'm not, I'm not against people coming when they join our church and they say they want to join by letter. But some people think that letter is a documentation that you're going to heaven. Not so. It, it, it's not a big legal form that we're going to mail out and, 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 and request from another church. I'll just be honest with you. A lot of churches won't even return a, a, a letter 
of recommendation. That's all it is, the letter of recommendation. In other words, Brother Buddy, if you, if, I guarantee you, if we sent one to the Mormon church, <laughs> what do you think they would have done to that? That tore that thing up in a thousand pieces, wouldn't it? But it's a letter of recommendation. Now, somebody, they would never do this, but if Brother Dennis and Sister Linda was to go join another church, well, after I got through whooping them, they, they, but if they go join a church, they would send a letter and say, we need a letter of recommendation. And I would write back and tell them just how bad they were. They would, we'd fix it so they wouldn't want them because we wanted them to come back. No, but that's what it is. And it's sad to say today, there's a lot of church members today would get some bad recommendations if the truth was told. How did we get off on that? Calvary covers it all. Amen. 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 There's suffering, there's shame, and there's sorrow. And there's some other things I don't have time to mention. But this morning, our relationship with the Lord is the most important thing in this life. Let's stand with our head bowed and our eyes closed. Sister Linda, if you'll come to the piano, please, she'll play our invitation hymn. And if you're here this morning and you need to come, you say, Preacher, I'm just not sure this morning. If I die right now, I'd go to heaven. Let me just say this morning, you need to come and make sure and settle that. If there's one here this morning, you say, Preacher, I know that I'm not saved. If I die right now, I know that I would not go to heaven. You need to come this morning. Give your heart and life to Christ. What Jesus did, he did for you. And don't let the death of the Savior be in vain. If you have a burden, if you have a need, if you have a problem, if you have troubles this morning, don't go out of this building with them. Bring them at the altar. And when you come to the altar, bring them and leave them. Let God take care of them. He's able this morning. Just leave them at the foot of Jesus. Amen. One's coming. Anybody else need to come? Step out and do what the Lord tells you. everything all right between you and the Father? Is everything all right between you and the brethren? Is everything all right between you and the sisters of the church? If you need help for any reason this morning, you can come. Make your way down this altar while this is a praying. Pray for the one at the altar. one here this morning you say preacher I am carrying a load I am carrying a burden this morning God knows all about it I've talked with him about it I've prayed about it preacher I do have a burden this morning you just like to raise your hand and say preacher just remember me in prayer God knows all about it God bless you God bless you you God bless you hands up across the building Thank you so much. God bless you. Oh my, we all have burdens. We all have needs. I'm glad the Lord can help us with them.
choir please try to be here for the practice uh, at the dismissal of the service this morning uh, we're going to give out these school supplies so Cindy if you'll come down and take your post or stand at it you don't have to take it but and then uh, Linda's going to be in the middle I guess member of Tim is over here now these the section over here where Cindy's at is for um, the K-4.